I want to entitle this one, uh, You're Not God's Type. Um, and uh, I'm probably going to read a lot more. Usually what I do is I just uh, read the scriptures and then comment. But uh, I'm probably going to read a little more than usual. Um, just because I think some of the things are, are better said than what I could just come up with off the top of my head. Alright, you're not... God's type. Most people, before they get married, formulate a concept of what kind of person they think would be their type, because they're looking for somebody that's their type. I have type in parentheses. For someone to be your type would mean that they had certain looks, such as hair color or eyes or uh, certain attributes, they're handsome, or they're pretty, or they're tall, or they're short. <clears throat> certain likes and dislikes that were similar to you, and that's everything from music to religion to things that are of your interest. And in other words, everyone would be married not just by your standard, but by you. It would be you as the measurement. And um, and so we see some of these sorts of things uh, in the scriptures. We see some of these deals where people are um, just choosing and picking and going about things according to their own understanding and their own view and their own preferences. In Judges chapter 21, verse 24 through 25, it says this, and the children of Israel departed thence at that time, every man to his tribe and to his family, and they went out from thence, every man to his inheritance. And so in that verse, verse 24, you see the emphasis upon his, going, going to his this or that or whatever. Um, uh, his tribe, he goes to his family, he goes to his inheritance. <laughs> In the next verse, verse 25, In those days there was no king in Israel. Every man did that which was right in his own eyes. And so everyone was a king unto himself. And then also in Psalms 36, verse 2, For he flattereth himself in his own eyes until his iniquity be found to be hateful. I was thinking about uh, if a person entered a room and wanted everybody to notice them because they felt like they were important or should be noticed by everybody, uh, he would be a self-trumpeter. He would be a self-trumpeter. <clears throat> so this says, for he flattereth himself. You know, usually flattery is directed towards someone else to gain favor. Anyway, verse uh, Proverbs uh, 12 Verse 15 says, The way of a fool, the way of a fool is right in his own eyes. But he that hearkeneth unto counsel is wise. And this, obviously, the counsel that the, the, the Proverbs is always speaking of, or Psalms, is the counsel of the Word of God, the counsel of the Lord, the counsel of the heart of the Lord. Uh, and and there's a there's a progression even in that the counsel of the Lord yes God where do you want me to go to work where do you want me to get a, you know do do you want me to marry this person or that I'm trying to get that the counsel of the word what does the word have to say about it and then ultimately the counsel of his heart being being able being able to go to the Word and not just see ink on white paper or godly instruction, but to see the heart of the Lord and, th and that move your heart. Completely different. Um, and then Proverbs 21, verse 1 through 2. I like this one. The king's heart is in the hand of the Lord as the rivers of water Verse 2, uh, or the end of that verse, He turneth it whithersoever he will. Now verse verse 2, after, after declaring that the king's heart is 
is in the hand of the Lord as rivers of water, and he can turn it wherever he wills. Verse 2 says, Every way of a man is right in his own eyes, but the Lord pondereth the hearts. A couple of things there. One is, maybe the Lord's not talking about the king over the nation. Maybe he's talking about people that he sees as kings who can rule well because their heart is in the hand of the Lord and can be turned whithersoever he will. And it says he's made us priests and kings, so there's some real possibility of that. The, the king, whoever that is, whoever, rule, whoever rules, if we're priests and kings, whoever rules, should have the same government as the king and should rule with the same government as the king and be ruled. Um, but then it says uh, every, every way of a man, not a king, not, not someone who is un, uh, whose heart is in the hand of the Lord, but just a man. <clears throat> every way of a man, every way of a man is right in his own eyes. But the Lord ponders the hearts, and and that's that's just paramount, and should be in our understanding. The Lord ponders the hearts. That's the deal. He's a God of the heart. He's a God of the heart, and He wants us to be a people of the heart, also. All right. So uh, now we know that. I mean, it's it's clear from most of what we share that the Lord wants a bride or he wants a body, or he wants a church, uh, whether male or female, he wants it to have a spirit of a bride that focuses on his heart. Because the difference between a secretary, she focuses on the man's uh, job. But the bride, the wife, when he comes home, she focuses on his heart. That's what's important to her. Um, and so, uh, and this, so the scriptures that we're well familiar with, Ephesians 5, 31, 32. For this cause shall a man leave his father and mother, and shall be joined unto his wife, and they too shall be one flesh. This is a great mystery, but I speak concerning Christ and his bride and the church. The scriptures have a literal meaning for us, but they also have a spiritual meaning. And when we find the spiritual meaning, we find the heart of the Lord because there are great mysteries in the heart of the Lord. There are great mysteries to be found, to be, to be dug out of His heart and to be found. And this is one of those great mysteries. These scriptures are not really speaking to you or trying to shape your life up or your marriage. He's speaking of of Christ and his church. And then Revelation 2 verse 9 through 11, And there came unto me one of the seven angels which had the seven vials full of the seven last plagues. So he just doesn't come with the vial, he comes with it full. <clears throat> and talked with me, saying, Come hither, I will show thee the bride, the Lamb's wife. Come hither, come where she, where she is. Leave your place, it doesn't matter what place that is, leave your place and come to the place where you start seeing the bride, but not just the bride, because when you know this, you know the scriptures. When you look, when you look at her, you see him inside on a throne, you see, and you see who he really is, a lamb dwelling in her, a lamb enthroned in her, a lamb governing by, by being a husband. Not just a king, but because have you seen the lamb's wife? Well, there's the lamb, and he's governing, but his spirit is, it's a great mystery. That's all I can say. It's a great mystery. But Revelation speaks of Christ in this church also. Uh, and he carried me away in the spirit to a great high mountain, a great high mountain, and showed me that great city, that great city, the holy Jerusalem. Oh my God. Where's he getting these words from, these concepts from? He's getting them from the heart of the Lord. This is a great, this is the bride. The new Jerusalem is the bride of Christ. And 
that great city, the holy Jerusalem, um, descending out of heaven from God, having the glory of God, and her light was like unto a stone most precious, even like a jasper stone, clear as crystal. Hallelujah. So, so his process of finding a bride is not the same as ours. Um, Jesus doesn't go by, you know, what, what type do I have. He goes by what kind that he wants to find. And type, again, refers to looks or attributes or, or likes and dislikes, that sort of thing. Um, but kind, kind is about what we are in our deepest being. That's what kind is about, and that's that goes right to the heart. Again, heart, heart, heart. It's always about the heart. Do we find his heart? Um, and then 1 Corinthians 13, 12 says this, For now we see through a glass darkly, but then face to face. Now I know in part, but then shall I know even as I am known. And <clears throat> what... What is, the, what is that then? What is that place? That place is when we begin to recognize his heart. Because it's in his heart that we begin to know as we are known. See, that's the problem. Uh, like I said, before you get married, you're dating, you're looking for somebody after your, that's your type. And uh, when it comes to the Lord, you don't even know who you are in relationship to him. You have to know his heart. And then you'll know as you're known already by him. We're trying to just know. I've got to find myself or I've got to, you know, uh, make my own way. That's the same thing as looking for your type. But, his, uh, but to find his heart is to begin to know us as he knows us. And that's the... That's the greater treasure right there. He already has us settled in his heart. He already loves us settled in his heart. He already uh, has committed himself unto death that, to get her in his heart. So what's the problem? The problem is we don't know as we're known. We know as we were born in our first birth or based on how, how good we are as a Christian. Okay, I need to get moving here. But <laughs> consider that in contrast to Jesus' approach toward us, consider his approach. First of all, in our natural state, we are neither his type or his kind. There is nothing there that appeals to him as his bride. We may try to become his type by matching our likes and dislikes to his, but he sees right through it. We may try to look more like we think he would want us to, to look, by acting more sweet or showing more patience, etc. But he knows our thought life and he knows our reactions and our inner life. And he knows real from fake. So what's our hope? My God, he knows real from fake. To know his heart. To know as we are known. To know ourselves as he is known. Romans 3, 10 and then verse 23 says this, as it is written, there is none righteous, no, not one, for all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. So he's, he's not just addressing sinners to come to Christianity. He's, a, he, he's addressing Christians who have come short of the glory of God. Um, but Jesus can do what none of us can. By making us one, he can not merely change our type, but our kind. While trying to become someone's type, we will change many things externally. But Jesus changes us on the inside. Second Corinthians three sixteen through eighteen. Nevertheless, when it the heart shall turn to the Lord. See there it is again, the heart. Nevertheless, when the heart he goes, Well, when you when you choose me as your savior, you know, that's what we always read into that. No, this is already people that are saved. And when their heart turns to the Lord, they'll be like him because they'll see him as he is. And that's what the scripture says. We'll be like him in another place. We shall see him as he is. Glory to God, because to do that is to see us as we are in him. <clears throat> now the Lord is that spirit, and where the spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. 
that we all with open face beholding as in a mirror the glory of the Lord are changed into the same image from glory to glory, even as by the Spirit of the Lord. So the change isn't making us better. We're changed into His image. And what used to be hard for us will come by life. And so to come by life, we need to know the life that we have. And to know the life we have, we need to know Jesus as life and not just Lord and Savior. Um, and then, um, finally in Jeremiah 31, verse 3 and 4, here he talks about his love. And his love is not based only on emotions, but it flows eternally from his heart. Jeremiah 31, verse 3 and 4, The Lord hath appeared of old unto me, saying, Yea, I have loved thee with an everlasting love. Therefore, with therefore, therefore, something's going to happen because he has loved us with an everlasting love. Therefore, with loving kindness have I drawn thee. So he's drawing, and we know he's drawing, but do we know why or what or what's behind his heart in it? Or are we just, God is drawing me to be more spiritual, or God is drawing me to act better, or whatever. He's drawing us because he, he loves us, and because he's loved us with an everlasting love. Therefore, with loving kindness have I drawn thee. Again, I will build thee. Not just draw us, he will build us. I will build thee, and thou shalt be built, O virgin of Israel. Look what, look at the words. We're, we're harlots. We're everything that's in ourselves, everything that is opposite of him. But because of his love, he draws us to oneness and to him and to his love. And then calls us, O virgin of Israel. This is coming out of Jeremiah. <laughs> with all of the things that he said negatively. Again, I will build thee, and thou shalt be built, O virgin of Israel. Thou shalt again be adorned with thy tambrels, and shalt go forth in the dances of them that make merry. And I just see Miriam and the ladies going out and dancing and they did that over the Song of Redemption. Can you imagine the Song of Solomon, the release for the bride? Amen. Let's pray. Amen. Lord, we just thank you so much for the things that are in you, things we don't even know yet, things deep, things so deep that we have to call them mysteries. And you, but you call them your treasures your treasures. You don't cast those before swine, you present them before bride. Lord, open our hearts not to your religion or to being more spiritual or trying to do better. Open our hearts, Holy Spirit, to the heart of Jesus that we may know as we are known and that we may see why He draws us and to what end He draws us. And that we might love Him more than we love life itself. That Jesus would be all and in all. Father, we ask it in Jesus' name. Amen.